Hello everyone and welcome to Your Inner Child Matters. In today's video, we'll take you into the profound journey of healing inner childhood anxiety caused by past traumas. I'm happy to share some valuable insight about healing from childhood trauma with you. Many of us hold inner fears from our past, but keep in mind that healing is possible. So, let's get started. When your mind is driven by fear, you can't see clearly. Your ability to perceive love or danger or opportunity gets wonky. And this can have a profound impact on how your life turns out. Has this happened to you? Living driven by fearful thoughts is absolutely one of the worst consequences of living with childhood PTSD. And first of all, I'm so glad you're here. I'm gonna talk about fear in this video. because It's a way to get your fear and resentment out of your mind where it's running around like a hamster or two and onto paper where you can have less fear and resentment. Can learn a new way to look at what we call fear that could be just the thing that helps you see that it is in fact driving you and it's driving your CPTSD symptoms if you have CPTSD. I'll show you what you can do so that you can name that fear and hopefully unlock that sense of comfort and confidence that every traumatized person needs to be able to access. We need it like we need vitamin C and sunshine to get on that level playing field where we can heal the effects of the past and start changing our lives. But what can happen is we have periods where we kind of go into resistance to that healing because we have inner obstacles. And today I want to start with the first one, the mother of them all that can keep us looping in the side effects of trauma and it's fear. Now this is not some lecture where I tell you just don't have fear. That's not how it works. This is about where fear comes from, what it really does to us, and it's worse than you think, and what to actually do to get free of your fear. Because no one tells you that. Have you noticed? Lots and lots of celebrities and athletes and self-help gurus tell you not to have fear. And it sounds so appealing, but when you have childhood PTSD, you're like, I can't just let go of my fear. And then you start to think, there must be something really deeply wrong with me. And there's nothing wrong with you. You have PTSD, which is a normal reaction to trauma in childhood. What works for other people, maybe you noticed it's like water running through your fingers. Nothing happens. It, it, it can't even touch the problem inside because the problem is something different. And so if you're like me, you have tried and tried to just act normal, to handle yourself with less anxiety and panic and more confidence to just get out there and try things and meet people and enjoy yourself. But PTSD is hard. And when the symptoms are happening, people are so stressful to be around. And that's kind of what used to drive my whole life before I recovered. I was terrified and I'm not sure everybody knew it, not if they hadn't known me for a while, but they'd find out soon enough. I wanted to be around people, and I had a whole way of acting lighthearted, and I would pretend to be tough, probably too tough. And I tried to be funny, and actually I probably was kind of funny. And for a while, I would have people fooled. They thought maybe I was kind of insensitive, but they believed that I was confident. Now, appearing confident is not the end all be all of being awesome, by the way. The thing about convincing people that you have it all together is that they can't see when you need help. You don't get the support you need and if you try to go without help and then you hit your limit all of a sudden and you start yelling and demanding that people help you now, that also doesn't work all that well and you're not gonna get the support that you need. The worst thing about fear, and I don't mean the useful kind of fear that gets you out of danger or that helps you be realistic about things. I mean the kind of fear that keeps you trapped in your mind, worried about random possibilities in the future, tripping about what people think about you, or uh, worrying about what they're about to do, fearing you're not good enough. This kind of fear is essentially a fantasy. And living in a fantasy means you're not living in reality. And reality is where you have to be if you wanna actually love people and be loved and solve real problems and feel good about yourself and serve the world. Living in a scared fantasy that everything's bad and people are out to get you means you're not really here. And if you feel like your life is passing you by, this could be why. This was definitely what was happening for me. 
there was this one day and my whole life is divided between the time before that day and then after that day when this woman I knew asked if I wanted her to show me how to get rid of fear. And it's funny, I needed that so badly, but I was defensive. I didn't quite understand that fear was what was driving me almost 100% back then. I was walking around terrified all the time that any moment people were gonna pull away from me for reasons I didn't even know. Maybe I was inappropriate somehow, or hurt their feelings, or was too needy, or I don't know. Maybe I was awful. But having my brain and emotions dysregulated all the time from childhood PTSD made it really hard for me to just know what was what, or to be aware of my effect on other people, or to act appropriately. And I could see it by the expression on people's faces. I'd be like, hmm, did I just say something wrong? And that's one of the hardest things about the effect of early trauma, is you don't know. You don't have a normal sense of what's weird and what's okay. So looking back, I had huge deficiencies in that part of my perception. We had alcoholism in my family. I didn't get a lot of guidance about what was weird and what was okay. I got some. I was loved somewhat, but the love and guidance I got went up and down randomly. And like a lot of children of alcoholics, I got very intentional about trying to get love and approval for their own sake, and very understandably. I was afraid all the time about the next time all that love and approval would just vanish with no reason. And that's what I carried into adulthood. I'd get really shut down and I'd pretend to be easygoing, but I had an angry edge. And that meant I was afraid all the time about anger leaking out randomly when I was trying to be kind to other people or to do a really good job on something. And I mean, I was kind, I was doing a good job, but every little bit of progress in life would be followed by some big failure or falling out with people. So I was afraid. And I know you've suffered with the same fears. Fear you're one step away from blowing it at work. Fear your relationship is hanging by a thread or fear you'll never find anyone, or if you do, they'll make your life so miserable like the last time, and fear you're not pretty enough, and fear you're too damaged, and fear, here's the big one, fear you'll be alone forever. Now, even if the details are different here and there, I know about the fear because childhood PTSD has a fairly predictable pattern for all of us. And in a culture that keeps telling you that you should somehow just not have fear, the worst fear of all is that you're not like other people. You can't stop the fear, and somehow it's all on you to do it anyway. So I have some good news. You don't have to live like this. You are not broken forever, and in fact, you have a real self inside under all that fear who knows exactly who you are and what you came to do. You know that. You've always known that. This is what happened to you, and then this is you. And the part that's overwhelming you is not so much what happened to you, but it's all the fear you have about what that means for you. Fear it's a terrible world, fear you'll be damaged forever, fear no one cares, whatever it is. The thing that happened, it's over. Your fear about what it means lives on. And this fear is not your friend. This fear is consuming and limiting. And until you get free, it's like a belief system that, oh yeah, you're one of the abused people and that is what you are. The abuse and neglect happened, but they are not you. You are not damaged forever. You are not broken. You are not pitiful. You are not a magnet for crazy people. You are not your trauma. What happened to you is so sad and it's real, but it's not you. Your story began long before that stuff happened and it will go on a really long time after you get free. And this way of getting free that I'm gonna show you is very gentle, it works over time, it's free, and you get to keep control over the process. Now sometimes you're gonna have to keep doing these techniques again and again before you make progress, but a lot of the time you'll get a big burst of freedom like right then and there. So it happens quickly and slowly at the same time, and the result is that you get to be right here where you belong, freer, stronger, and more your true self. And when you have less fear, your whole life opens up to good things. All that love inside you can be shared more, and it's not all bogged down with sadness and craving to get that caretaking you never got enough of. 
you might find you feel more self-contained and content and not so out of control. And if you keep this up, next thing you know, your natural talents and gifts begin to show themselves. And that is where the joy begins. You sharing what you came here to give. You being yourself and not taking any more crap. You free with more connection and less fear. Now, more connection and less fear means more freedom to make mistakes if you want to. Because you know that if you screw up, you'll just get free again. Can you feel what I'm saying? This is really powerful. And maybe you've tried it, or maybe you've just heard me talk about it, but it's the writing and meditation technique I call the daily practice. You have all kinds of beautiful fears there, and being able to, to have them, acknowledge them, and get them on paper and ask for them to be removed is the most powerful and respectable thing that a man or woman can do. Healing inner childhood fear from childhood trauma is a challenging path that is different to each person. You can gradually break yourself out of those fears by admitting your past, finding support, and practicing self-compassion. Thank you for joining me on this transformative journey. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share it with others who might find it valuable. Remember that healing is possible and that you are not alone. Take care until the next time.